What's up, everyone? Mark Oblander. Hold on, hold on. Y'all y'all need some guns. Y'all good now? Good. TigerFitness.com. You guys know I have a new article coming out on the content side on Tiger Fitness on, on basically how talent is overrated and how to maximize your talent and your time to help you achieve greatness in life. Now, this channel, a lot of people go, your fitness channel, stick to fitness, stick to fitness. Bodybuilding should enhance, not take over one's life. And this channel isn't, look, I'm a CEO. I made most of my money before I came into the fitness industry. Um, at the end of the day, I'm just a business guy. You know, a business guy who really likes throwing on heavy weights. I know how to uh, formulate products. I know what I'm doing. I've been in the industry for 15 years, but I'm more interested in helping people achieve wealth in all areas of their life, be it financially, spiritually, mentally, and of course, physically. Wow, that sounded deep as fuck, didn't it? So anyway, as I take a sip of my machine fuel, always selling shit. See, there's step number one, always be closing. It's fucking delicious. I was, I was sent this article by my brother, who's a very successful senior VP for Prize Logic. Prize Logic, they do such programs. I think I'm allowed to say this. They have clients such as McDonald's, like McDonald's Monopoly, things like that. If you go to prizelogic.com, that's what my brother does. He's the SVP. So my brother's a smart, smart dude. And we don't spend time talking about training. We spend time talking about business and what, what, uh, and basically, uh, you know, creating wealth of knowledge in ourselves and in others. And uh, a lot of you guys just see me yelling at the camera. A lot of you guys just see me throwing around weights. But you've never seen me in a boardroom setting unless you saw my IRCE presentation, which um, is on this channel, um, where you see me in more of an academic setting. At the end of the day, I'm a nerd. I am the biggest nerd you'll ever meet when it comes to marketing, business, and psychology. I love that stuff, okay? It's what I'm well-read on. It's what I do. It's what I make money consulting on. I do some of that on the side still. Um, I do a lot of things. But... Um, this article was written by Thomas C. Corley, which I've read a couple of his pieces, and it's called, Will Your Child Be Rich or Poor? 15 Poverty Habits Parents Teach Their Children. And essentially, at first, I'm going to go over these and then interject some opinion. At first, he goes into talking about, he asked people they want to be financially successful in life. And of course, every raise hands in the air. Every, every, every hand is in the air when he says that. And then how many, how many have taken a course in school on how to be financially successful in life? Never does a hand raise because there is no course in that. Here's some statistics from a five-year study on the daily habits that separate the wealthy from the poor. Now, this is something that I went down the list and started noticing what I know and don't know. And this just shows you how in tune people are with their finances and themselves. Number one, 72% of, of the wealthy know their credit score versus 5% of the poor. 6% of the wealthy play the lottery versus 77% of the poor, meaning that the wealthy, this is my opinion on that one, the wealthy aren't looking for that magic one-time hit. The wealthy know that it takes work, perseverance, and diligence, which you'll read in my upcoming article on the content site on tigerfitness.com, that perseverance and hard work always win. Oh, most, oh, there's always an exception, but let me just say, everybody I know and who've been successful, unless they're a silver spoon mofo, another line I used in the article, um, which should be up soon. Just keep checking the content site or sign up for the mailing list. Um, those are those are things that um, are very, very prominent. Among, every CEO I've talked to has failed many times. 80% of the wealthy are focused on at least one girl, goal versus 12% of poor. Um, there's a book called by Al Rees and Jack Trout called Focus. I encourage you to read that. F read that. Focus on the goal. Being the master of all trades or the jack of all trades is way, way, way less important than being master of one. Basically, focus on your goal and work your hardest to move towards that. 62% of the wealthy floss their teeth every day versus 16% of the poor. Whether it's because they can't afford floss or what. At the end of the day, it shows personal hygiene, and it also shows commitment to bettering yourself. I mean, you don't want your teeth to fall out, right? Unless you're in the South. They just don't care about teeth, right? I'm sorry. I lived in North Carolina for seven years. Bad joke. 21% of the wealthy are overweight by 30 pounds or more versus 66% of the poor. Whether that's due to food choices because of what they can afford or whatnot, it also shows another issue where fitness does relate or is correlated to success. 83% of the wealthy attend slash attended back to school night for their kids versus 13% of the poor. Whether it's because they had to work that night, there are some variables that come into play. But I have seen as someone who came from a rec soccer program, which is free. It's basically 60 bucks a year. 
where I'm paying upwards of three, four hundred dollars a month to for for travel soccer, the parents do attend more children's events. Whether it's because they have more free time, there's more stay-at-home moms or whatnot. It just shows you that there is a disconnect, and also that might be why there is less achievement statistically in single parent households. 29% of the wealthy had one or more children who made the honor roll versus 4% of the poor. Whether that's because they can afford more schooling or training, that's a statistic to look at. 63% of wealthy wealthy listen to audiobooks during their commute versus 5% of the poor. Again, enriching your mind, enriching knowledge, something that wealthy people have been shown. I mean, it, it is what it is. I've worked, I've worked all levels of jobs from stock boy to shoe salesman at a sporting goods store where they sold LA gear to what I'm doing now. You do see a huge discrepancy in the amount of continued education among the wealthy versus the poor. And again, this is not putting down the poor by any means. I want everybody who needs more money, I want them to watch this channel. I want to give you the tools to help you make more money and be more successful in life. And I know this isn't a business channel. I had a business channel, but hey, I only have time for one channel, okay? And it's the Tiger Fitness. If you don't like it, turn it off, okay? Um... 9% of the wealthy watch reality TV shows versus 78% of the poor. Take from that what you will. 67% of the wealthy watch one hour or less of TV per day versus 23% of the poor. Again, spending their time doing more productive things. 73% of the wealthy were taught in the 80-20 rule versus 5% of the poor. Live off of 80%, save 20%. That explains our generation where we live in debt. 79% of the wealthy network Five hours or more per month versus 16% of the, of the poor. I like to say my networking time is at least 10 to 20 hours a month, if not more. 79% of the wealthy network, whoa, 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 that was the same thing. 8% of the wealthy believe wealth comes from random good luck versus 79% of the poor. So I've been trying to tell you on this channel this whole time. The harder I work, the luckier I get. If you work, you don't have to worry about that secret friggin' magical moment that you become rich. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen most of the time. 79% of the wealthy believe they are responsible for their financial condition versus 18% of the poor. Accountability is the key to making gains in life. If you're not accountable for your, if, you, if you're accountable for your shortcomings and you correct those, chances are those shortcomings won't be shortcomings anymore. The fact is the poor are poor because they have too many poverty habits and too few rich habits. So now we're going to move forward. Parents in our schools need to work together to instill daily good success habits as follows. Limit TV, social media, and cell phone use to no more than an hour a day. Require that children read one to two educational books per month. We're good on those. Require children aerobically exercise 20 to 30 minutes a day. Limit junk food to no more than 300 calories a day. This is the best article I've read in years. Require that children, except for mine, mine fucking kick ass. Require that children set monthly, annual, and five year goals. Require working age children to work or volunteer at least 10 hours a week. Require that children save at least 25% of their earnings or gifts they receive. Teach children the importance of relationship building by requiring them to call friends, family, teachers, coaches, etc. on their birthday and to send thank you cards or gift for gifts or help they may have received from anyone. Again, teaching them to um, respect and value things that are given to them, not just be entitled. Reassure children that mistakes are good, not bad. Children need to understand that the very foundation of success in life is built on learning from our mistakes. Punish children and lose their temper so they understand the importance of controlling this very costly emotion. I still need to do that myself. As you've seen in my YouTube videos. Teach children that seeking financial success in life is good and it is worthwhile goal. Children need to learn what the American dream is and that it is something to be pursued in life. I think we've lost track of the American dream, which is basically having your own success where you don't have to rely on others. Um, you know, that whole like grinding, working your way to the top, you know, rags to riches. I don't see that in our kids anymore. And it's really sad, whether that's the government's fault or the fault of parents for telling people that it's someone else's fault for their shortcomings. At the end of the day, we need to get that American dream philosophy back. Even though once you hit that dream, they tax the shit out of you. Children need to learn how to manage money. Open up a checking account or savings account for children and force them to use their savings to buy the things they want. They need to learn that they are not entitled to things like cell phones, computers, fashionable clothes, fat screen, flat screen TVs, etc. Again, I need to get better at that. We we need to get better at that as a family. We're too good to our kids. Too too much. I mean, I didn't have much like cool shit as a kid and 
I have trouble saying no. Um, require children to participate in at least two non-sports related extracurricular activities at school or outside of school. Yes, we have done that. Um, Cammie did choir this year and something else. Um, I forgot what it was, but nonetheless, she did that stuff. Parents and children need to set aside at least an hour a day to talk to one another. Not on Facebook, not on the cell phone, but face-to-face. -face. An hour is a bit much, I think, for most people. I think a good 20 minutes of devoted time is what I can afford to do. Teach children how to manage their time. They should be required to create daily to-do lists, and these lists need to be monitored by parents. The goal should be to accomplish at least 70% of their tasks on their daily to-do list. What I'm getting at here, the reason I thought this was something I'd like to share with everybody on this channel is that I think we lose focus of ourselves. We lose accountability of whose fault it is if we underachieve, whose fault it is if we don't hit numbers, whose fault it is if we don't reach our goals. And we end up blaming others. At the end of the day, what we found is that by comparing two socioeconomic groups of people, the wealthy and the poor, we find that their habits, while correlated, and in correlation studies, you know my opinion on those, they're profoundly correlated where you can see that how that mindset of the poor, how that mindset can set you down. I encourage you, I follow 50 Cent, believe it or not, on Instagram. And he's turned himself around from that guy who sung about bitches and hoes and shooting people and getting shot. You read his post now, it's about success. Sleep is for the poor. And it's actually extremely motivating. I follow Mark Cuban's uh, Instagram. Um, those are things that motivate me. Those are hard workers, people who made it, who might not have started with that, you know, that silver spoon in their mouth, but who worked their way up to become great. And while I'm not at their level, not even close, I believe that once you read the story I have coming out in the uh, Tiger Fitness, um, it's called, it's going to be called, I believe, Talent is Overrated unless Steve changes the title. Um, I encourage you to read that because while I may not be at a level of a Mark Cuban, I have worked my way up. I have done some things and there are some things that you can take from my trials and tribulations and my successes and failures and put them to use for you to help you become a more successful person, both in the weight room, um, obviously in the boardroom and maybe even in the bedroom. I'm Mark Lobiner, TigerFitness.com, setting goals, achieving them not letting complacency get the best of you, being the best damn you you can be. It's not a game.